As gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's the breakfast that wins the praise of so many top action Hollywood movie stars. It's Quaker puffed wheat. Or Quaker puffed rice. These ready to serve cereals are shot from guns. They're crisp and tender. They're full of nut like flavor. Ask mom to order both delicious kinds Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Chet Craig had gained a reputation as a clever gang leader in the Yukon Territory. He never tried to hide his identity when pulling a job, and yet he always managed to elude the law in some way or other. In fact, Craig openly boasted about his name and his deed whenever he could force victims to listen. For instance, Chet Craig and his small gang of four men entered the Golden Calf Cafe in Selkirk one night. Hey, 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 hey. Those shots were a warning. This is a holdup. The first one that moves, you get a bullet. Oh, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now the boys will line you up against the wall so as to make things easier. Get over there, Ollie. Get them lined up and search them, boys. Right. You won't get away with this, mister. The mountains will get on your trail, and all of you will soon be looking through bars. Ha! <laughs> Just tell the Marty's Chet Craig and his boys paid you a visit. They already got my description, but up to now, that's all they got. Hurry it up, boys. Let's get out of here. All right, come on, let's go. A few weeks later, in Whitehorse, the teller at the bank looked up as a man approached the cage window. Something for you, sir? Yeah, here's a uh, withdrawal slip. Tell him what I want. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand dollars. Do you have an account here, uh, Mr. Craig? Chet Craig's the name. Just pass out the money and forget the questions. Chet Craig, I don't... Re Chet Craig, the outlaw. <laughs> Surprise. All right, hurry it up. Our boys are waiting over there. And one or two of them have itchy trigger fingers. This is a hole up. Sure, what else? Get busy. Yeah, yes, yes, sure. <laughs> it was a short time after the bank robbery that Sergeant Preston was called to the inspector's office at Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson City. Come on. Come on, King. <laughs> oh, good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, Inspector. You sent for me? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sit down, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Sergeant, you've heard of Chet Craig? The gang leader? Yes, sir. But he's getting more brazen day by day. And so far, none of our men have been able to catch up with him or that gang of his. From all reports, he has four men with him. Craig's a clever operator. I know. A few days ago, he walked into a bank in Whitehorse in broad daylight and got away with $10,000. Whitehorse, eh? Craig got around. Last I heard, he'd pulled a job in Selkirk. That's right. I'm giving you a special assignment, Sergeant. Get to Whitehorse as quickly as possible and try to run down Chet Craig and his gang. Chet Craig and his men had settled in a hideout shack a few miles south of Whitehorse, hidden behind a bluff on the far side of a stream. One day, Chet was outlining a plan. We've been hiding out ever since that bank robbery. It's about time we went into action again. Got anything in mind, Chet? Well, Wes was in town last night and he found out a big payroll for the Whitehorse Mining Company is coming in on the boat that docks tonight. It's being handled by the express company. It'll be kept at the express office overnight. You aiming to try to get that dough, Chet? <laughs> what do you think? It'll be a cinch. Now, there's a new night man on duty at the express office, a fellow by the name of Bob Sumner. We'll wait till he's on duty. 
Never go in and get that cash. Good idea. I don't want any slip-ups. We'll follow our usual plan. After the robbery, each of you head off on your own. Make for the stream. Then ride along in it, back to the hideout. <laughs> in that way, we leave five separate trails to confuse the constable. <laughs> He's confused enough as it is after the bank robbery. Well, tonight's the night, then. After we get the dough, we'll leave here tomorrow heading south. That night, after the money shipment had been delivered from the boat, the new night clerk, Bob Sumner, locked the safe and then sat at a desk going over waybills. The door opened and Chet Craig entered with his men. Good evening. Something I can do for you, man? Uh, sure. Just get up and mosey over to that safe and get it open. That'll save a lot of trouble for us. Huh? Uh, you, you're out, boss. Well, what do you know, Chet? We're out, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Safe's locked for the night. I can't get it open. Well, you don't say. Get over there. You'll get some lead. No. No, I'll lose my job. I... Anyway, I can't open the safe. Bob, I decided to come down and walk home with you. What's wrong? Mary, Mary, get out of here. Get out. Oh, wait a minute. Don't let her leave, Harry. Stay where you are, lady. Why are you holding a gun on my husband? Mary, you shouldn't have come in. <laughs> so this is Mrs. Sumner. If any of you touch her, I... You'll do what? Stop! Stop! Do you hear? That's just to show we mean business. Now, uh, Sumner, go open that safe if you really care for your wife. All right. All right, I'll open it. <laughs> That's better. Watch him, Harry. All right, boss. I wouldn't want it said that Chet Craig had to get tough with a nice young woman like your wife. Chet Craig? I've heard of you and your outlaw gang. Sure. I guess everybody in the Yukon's heard about us. There. It's open. Good. Empty it, boys. Yeah. Here, take this. Sir. This? Yeah. Got it. That's all. Now, we got everything, Chet. Let's get out of here. Close the safe and lock it again. Sure. Well, we'll put out the lights, go out and lock the door, and take the Sumners along with oh, us. Oh, no. Huh? <laughs> you know, I reckon for a time, everybody will think Sumner robbed the place, picked up his wife and beat her. Oh, please, don't take us with you. Oh, tie us up and... Nothing we'll done. Harry, you take Sumner, I'll take the girl. Come on, let's get going. All right, boys, come on, hurry up. It was early the next morning when Sergeant Preston arrived at the constable's office in Whitehorse. Oh, Blackie. Come along, gang. Well, Sergeant Preston, I'm sure glad to see you. Hello, Frank. I came just in time to hear the news. What news? New clerk at the express office is missing, along with his wife. Huh? What's more, a shipment of cash is also missing from the express office safe. The express agent just left here after making a report. You haven't been over there to investigate? Uh, no, I was just about to go when you came in. Do you want to come along? Of course, let's go. Come on, King. <laughs> after looking around the express office, Sergeant Preston and the constable went outside. The express agent, Mr. Grant, was with them. Alongside the building, Preston pointed to the ground. Look, Frank, several hoof marks at this spot. Perhaps Sumner was really working with the gang, Sergeant. Now, that seems a little far-fetched to me. Tell me, Mr. Grant, how long has Sumner worked for you? About a month. He came well recommended. He and his wife, Mary, took a small cabin at the edge of town. Before I come to any conclusions, let's look over their cabin, Frank. All right. I feel sure Bob Sumner took that money. Nothing in the office was disturbed, and he locked the safe after taking the cash, then left and locked the door. We'll be back shortly, Mr. Grant. Come on, Frank. Let's go, King. <laughs> A short time later, the two Mounties again entered the express office. Did, did you come to any conclusions, Sergeant? Yes, Mr. Grant. We found the table set for two in preparations for a late supper. Also, clothing and supplies have not been taken. That means Sumner didn't plan a robbery ahead of time. It could have been on the spur of the moment. We questioned a few people and learned that Mary Sumner made a habit of walking to the express office each night at closing time to walk home with her husband. Their horses, which they keep at the livery stable, are still there. Then you don't think I that... feel sure Bob Sumner and his wife did not steal that money. I'd say they were forced to go along with the crooks who did take it. Well, I like Bob. I hope he didn't pull the job. We found that the horsemen separated a short distance from here, Mr. Grant. The constable tells me that follows the pattern used by Chet Craig and his gang. Chet Craig? Then you think he and his gang robbed the safe? Yes, I do. And to make sure they had plenty of time to make a getaway, they forced Bob and his wife to go along with them. They've got to find Craig and his gang soon, or something may happen to Bob and Mary Sumner. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment.
Did you ever wonder what it would be like traveling on a Yukon riverboat? Going along the banks, watching all the interesting. Of course, I'd want to be sure they'd have my favorite breakfast cereal aboard. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Gotta have the cereal shot from guns. Hey, a fish there, landlubber. What in thunder's going on here? Uh Uh-oh. You must be the captain. You bet. I'm running things here, and I don't stand for no gunplay. Oh, yes, sir. I I mean, aye, aye, sir. But that shooting you heard now was just me reminding the folks about the keenest tasting breakfast ever. About what? I mean the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Well, that's a new kind of shooting to me. You see, we load huge guns with choice sun-ripened premium grains of rice or wheat. And then these guns are exploded. Out come big giant grains, exploded up to eight times normal size. They're magnified, crispified. Shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. That's why Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are so good to eat. Mmm, well, sounds sort of tasty. And for breakfast, lunch, or supper, all you do is pour out a bowl full right from the package. No cooking. Just add milk or cream and top with your favorite fruit. Mm. Well, that's for me. What's more, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are nourishing. They furnish added health values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Well, let's load some on the boat. You bet. And say, fellas and girls, remind your mom to load Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in her shopping basket soon. Tell her to look for the packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Then she'll be sure to get the original crisp, fresh, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Remember, you get exciting Sergeant Preston Yukon Trail models right now on eight different new packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. And a Yukon riverboat with a stern wheel that actually turns is included in the 59 swell cutout models. They're larger, easier to build. And they come only with the big red and blue packages of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Get yours tomorrow, sure. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston's quick mind and his ability and training at keen observation helped him to form the correct conclusion regarding the express office robbery. The constable listened to what Sergeant Preston said and then asked... I think you hit the nail on the head, Sergeant, but how do you expect to find Craig and his men when they left so many trails? Well, Frank, it stands to reason the gang will meet each other. By following one of the trails, we ought to be able to find the entire gang sooner or later. Let's get to our horses. Come on, gang. After getting their horses, the two Mounties with King picked up the trail of one of the horses ridden by the crooks and followed it. The trail led northward for some distance and then turned toward the shallow river. Looks like he headed for the river, Sergeant. Yes, he did. We may lose the trail there. Maybe not. I'm counting on King to help us pick it up. But even King can't follow a trail in water, Sergeant. A man's scent hangs in the air over water, Frank. And if there isn't too much wind, it settles on the brush along one bank. Fortunately, the air is fairly still, so I'm hoping King will be able to find the scent. Lead us in the right direction. I see. Here's the river. Oh, Blanky. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. river isn't very wide, and it's quite shallow along here. The man we followed may have crossed the other side. Eh, won't take us long to find out. Sergeant Preston looked for hoof marks on the opposite shore, but found none. When he returned across the stream, he noticed the great dog Yukon King sniffing the brush along the near bank. Oh, Blanky. Hold on, hold on. You didn't find any hook marks over there? No, he most likely rode along in the water to cover his trail. The way King's acting, I'd say he headed south. I got it. King is moving downstream as if he's found something along the riverbank. I'm sure he's found the man's scent. Find him, King. Get him, boy. Let's go, Frank. Get up, Blackie. Get up. Meantime, Chet Craig and his men were in the shack hideout making preparations to leave for the south border. Bob and Mary Sumner were tied to chairs placed along one wall. We'll be ready to leave here shortly, boys. I guess we get everything we'll need for our trip south. Yeah. Yeah. What about the woman and her husband, Chet? (laughs) 
The shack is out of the way. Maybe someone will find him. And again, maybe they won't. <laughs> I reckon they're going to get kind of hungry waiting for someone to find him, eh? <laughs> Listen, Craig. I don't care so much about you leaving me tied up like this. But give my wife a chance. Untie her before you leave. Nothing doing, Sumner. As it is now, the law will think you grabbed that cash. They'll be hunting you instead of us, so it'll give us a chance to travel south without anything to worry about. But you can't leave us like this. We'll starve if we're not found. Yeah, maybe so. But that would be murder. You can't do this to us. Whining about it won't help, lady. Hey, Wes, yeah. we'll bring the horses around. All right, sir. Harry, you and I will put the cash in our saddlebags. Sure, Chad. You other two get the stuff outside and see that it's packed in the other saddlebags, huh? Isn't very much. That's right. It'll ride, all right. By nightfall, we'll be a long way from here and with plenty of cash. <laughs> the funny part is the law will be looking for you, Sumner, for robbery. Chet Craig and his men mounted their horses and left, leaving the door of the shack slightly ajar. Bob struggled to free himself from the cords that held him to the chair, but it was useless. It's no use, Mary. You've done a good job of tying us to these chairs. Oh, Bob, what are we going to do? Nobody will ever find us here. I'm hungry and... These cords hurt my wrists and ankles. I know, honey, but don't give up hope. There must be some way we can get loose. Oh, but even if we do, Bob, how will we get back to town? We haven't any horses. What's the matter? Bob, in the doorway, a bear. Holy smoke. Get out of here. Get out. Bob, Bob, he's coming in. As Bob and Mary Sumner, tightly bound to chairs, looked at the ferocious appearing animal in the doorway, the bear started toward them, growling. Go away! Go away! Bob! Bob! Oh, Mary! Are you all right? Oh, thank heaven you found us in time. By golly, that bear meant business. Yeah. Yeah, he sure did. Come on, Frank, help me untie them. All right. There, Mrs. Sumner, you'll be all right now. This does it, Bob. Thanks, Constable. I don't know how you found us, but we're sure glad you did. We managed to trail you here. We left our horses and made our way to the shack just in time. Oh, Chet Craig and his gang tied us to those chairs. They robbed the express office safe and then forced us to go with them. He has four men with him. I figured Craig was trying to throw the blame to you, Bob. You certainly hit it right, Sergeant. How long have they been gone, Bob? About a half an hour, I'd say. They're heading south. Craig figured the Monty should blame the robbery on me. If we didn't have Sergeant's dog, King, along, we might have. Bob, do you and your wife mind staying here until we come back for you? Not at all. Now that we're not tied to those chairs. Good. We'll pick up Craig's trail and try to catch up with him. That bear. Oh, please don't leave him lying in here. I'll manage to drag his carcass out, Sergeant. All right, Bob. Come on, Frank. Let's go, King. <laughs> Leaving the Sumners at the shack with a gun and provisions, the two Mounties quickly went to their horses, followed by King. It's going to be five against two, Sergeant. Five against three, Frank. You forgot to count King. What's more, we have the element of surprise on our side. They don't expect to be followed. I hope we get them. We'll get them one way or another. Now let's be on our way. Steady, All right, All right King. Come on, oh, 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 oh. Chet Craig and his followers rode along the south trail toward White Pass at an easy pace. They had taken to the stream after leaving the shack in order to cover their trail and had ridden along in the water for a couple of miles before turning onto the trail. Chet, believing they had again outwitted the law, was in high spirits. <laughs> we'll be able to live in style when we get back into the States, boys. A trip to the Yukon Territory sure paid off well, eh? Yeah, that's right. Well, we got a hand it to you, Chet. You sure know how to get around the law up there. Come on. Well, I hear the Maudis say they always get their man. They'll have to change their slogan after the way we fool them. Yeah, sure right. will. Hey, there's a roadhouse up ahead. We'll stop there and get something to eat, huh? It suits me. Yeah, I reckon all of us could go for something to eat about now. Yeah, sure. We won't waste much time there. Let's get a move on. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Come on. A short time later, the outlaws left their horses in back of the small roadhouse and followed Chet to the front door. Man, what can I do for you? We want to get something to eat real quick. I reckon we can give you some hot cakes and coffee pretty quick. How's that? All right with me. How about it, fellas? Sure. All, right. All right, then. Just sit down over there at one of the tables, and I'll go to the kitchen and put in your order. Yeah, come on, fellas. Sit down, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really don't know it yet, but the food's going to be in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I bet those summers back at the shack would like to have a bit of food right about now. Yeah, I reckon they would. Bill's for you in a little while, man. 
I guess you'll have some company while you're eating. I passed the side window back there and saw a couple of Mounties uh, coming uh, down uh, the trail. Bobby, I'm going to get a look. Yeah. By thunder, Chet, he's right. They'll reach you in a few minutes. What'll we do? Uh, log through that door back there, quick. Uh, come on. Hey, hold on. You can't go back there. That's my living quarter. Well, listen, you... We'll be in there with the door partly open, understand? And with guns aimed your way, get rid of them Mounties, if you know what's good for you. Let's go, boys. As the roadhouse owner stood with a frightened look on his face, the outlaws went into the back room, leaving the door open just wide enough to point a gun through. A couple of minutes later, he heard the two Mounties stopping outside. Casting a side glance at the door to the back room, the man moved behind the shout corner near the front door, just as Sergeant Preston and the constable entered with King. Hi. What, what can I do for you? If you come to eat, it'll take some time. Where are the men who stopped here a short time ago? You must be mistaken, Sergeant. I haven't seen any men along here today except you and the constable. You sure about that? Yes. <laughs> sure, I'm sure. For a moment, Sergeant Preston stood looking at the man before him. Out of the corner of his eye, he noticed the great dog king sniff the floor and then go to a table off to one side. As Preston watched, King then stood looking at the door to the back room with a low growl coming from his throat. Barely turning his head, Preston caught a glimpse of a gun barrel pointed through the narrow crack of the door. The Mountie knew that he and the constable were perfect targets for the guns of Craig and his men. He smiled at the roadhouse owner and spoke. Well, I guess we are mistaken at that. The men we mentioned must have gone on along the trail. Sergeant, a moment ago you were I sure that they... I was wrong. Young King, King, come on, boy. Thanks, mister. Sorry to bother you. Let's go, Frank. Look, Sergeant, quiet, I don't... Quiet, quiet, Frank. Craig and his men are in the back room with guns pointed through a crack in the door. That's why King was looking that way and growling. First day, they could have shot us down while we stood there. That's right. I used to hear with King. I'll go to the back window and try to get the drop on them. When you hear a commotion, come in fast and bring King with him. All right. Stay here, King. Chet Craig and the others stood waiting with drawn guns as the two Mounties turned and went out. Then Chet spoke. For a minute, I thought we'd have to drill them. Yeah, and the way that dog was looking this way, I thought they'd know we were here. Well, they're gone. Let's go. No, no. We'll wait a minute and make sure they don't come back. The five men stood huddled together near the door, waiting for the word from Chet to leave the room. None of them heard the faint creaking of the back door so that when they were all taken by surprise, they saw Sergeant Preston and heard his voice. Don't move, anyway. Hey, Someone's behind us. Yeah, Monty, at the back door. They all swung around and saw Preston standing in the open doorway with a drawn gun. Get him, Chet. Chet made the first move, raising his gun. I'll get him. No, you don't. Oh, he put me in. Everybody head for the front door. Hurry up, boys. As the men left Chet and ran to the main room, heading for the front door, they found that their way was blocked by the constable who had just entered. There we are. The other man in the front doorway, shoot him! Ah, oh, that dog! Get him away! Up your gun, I say. For a short moment, Harry hesitated, taking in the situation at a glance. Chet was wounded, and Wes was struggling with the dog king. Keep down, boys. Harry realized that he and the two others who were left stood trapped between Sergeant Preston and the constable, whose guns were ready for business. We're trapped. Better do as he says. Here's my gun. And here's mine, too. Dog king, dog boy. Gosh, Sergeant, I... I had to tell you a lot. Well, I know. Forget it. Frank? Yes? Bring Craig out here. He's been wounded. He had no right pulling guns on us. We saw you waiting with drawn guns through the crack in the door. Have the innkeeper fix his wound while you keep the others covered. I'll go outside and search their saddlebags. Sergeant Preston left for a short time. Then he returned, carrying the packets of new paper money the gang had stolen from the express office. Here's the evidence. The stolen cash. By golly, that's all we need. Craig? We arrest you and your men in the name of the Crown for robbery and murder. There'll be other evidence against you when we get you back to town. You mean that's Chet Craig and his gang? Holy mackerel. Yes, but they're all through terrorizing the Yukon Territory. On the way back, Frank, we'll pick up Bob and his wife. They'll be good witnesses against this gang. All right, let's go. This case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure, The Dead Man's Trail. Now, let your family enjoy the puff cereal that's America's favorite. Delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat 
or Quaker puffed rice. Yes, the famous cereal shot from guns is a four-to-one favorite among all brands of puffed cereals, according to independent coast-to-coast surveys. And no wonder, they're crisp, tender, full of tempting nut-like flavor because only the choice premium grains are exploded up to eight times normal size. Then consider the nourishment in every bowl your family eats. Extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Every morning, let your whole family enjoy this economical deluxe breakfast cereal. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and sweet, juicy red strawberries or other fruit. Remember, the flavor and crispness of wheat and rice shot from guns are safeguarded because these famous breakfast cereals come only in the large red and blue packages which have an inner lining for double protection. That's why Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Get both delicious kinds and be sure the famous picture of the smiling Quaker man is on each package. And now, here's Sergeant Preston. Inspector, there's nothing to report. We only have Tim Blake's testimony. The murder's been committed, and so far, we haven't been able to find the corpse. That's understandable, Sergeant. There's been a new development. Huh? What's that, sir? Ruth Jennings isn't dead. He was seen leaving town 15 minutes ago with a gun. He's on his way to the El Dorado, and he means to kill Johnny Larkin. Get going, Sergeant, and make it fast. Yes, sir. In the dark of night, Sergeant Preston races up the Klondike Trail, and ahead of him is the man who was supposed to be dead, the man who is now intent on committing murder. There it is, the cabin, a light in the window. Is that a cry for help? Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long.